All right, where did we leave off? Um, yeah, we went. And we have now filled in all of the translations. Uh, I actually updated uh, from earlier. Uh, I put uh, French, but it really should be Francais. So uh, we now have all our translations. I even translated these pages because this will be our next step to translate those. Again, every every time we make changes, it's always good to test. So to do, done, to do. Let's go to our profile. Everything looks good. We'll switch over to French. Uh, if you changed your language, please, please reload. So we'll close this. We'll relaunch it. Oh, now we're list affair, affair fini. It looks like we have our French, uh, so all of this is good, except uh, actually we see no list items, no completed items. So this is returned from the Adela database. So we're not translating things that come from the server. Uh, one option that I won't show you here, but I'll just explain. In the list empty state, uh, put none and then um, when you have nothing in the list empty state, you'll be able to put a text box that will, um, sorry, a text box that will only appear if the if the count of the tasks is zero, uh, and then you'll be able to translate that text. Let's go on to to how we're going to translate these. So, if you remember from uh, the last video on language translations, we're gonna make these into lists, but we need to know what language to actually display. So we have the other component that we installed called localization. So localization just tells you um, more information about the, the person uh, or the, the thing that's connecting to you. So with localization, uh, we're gonna wanna say what our languages are. So this is the list of available languages. This is going to be the code. Uh, we're not using any of the dash US's, so we'll just leave it at EN, which is English. And we're going to add in a text input. Uh, this is just going to be a placeholder so we can pass the information places. So let's call this uh, devices language code. We're going to remove the border and the background. We are going to remove the placeholder and we are going to shrink this down to nothing. So now we go back to our localization components. We are going to change the inputs of our device's language code and use the localization callbacks. So just to go through a couple of these items. So the first language on your phone, if you, if you set it up, you can actually say that my preferred language is, uh, let's say you're, you're Italian. So, so you might want to put Italian, French, English. So the first language is the Italian. The best language uh, would be the one that you're based on, based on this list of languages here and the phone, it's the highest priority language that matches both. So in the example of Italian, French, and English, uh, our, our software supports English and French. So we don't support Italian, so Italian's out. But we do support French, and that's the user's second preferred language. So rather than, even though the user does have English as an option, rather than displaying the software in English, the person would prefer French. So we're going to choose the best language, uh, which, uh, depending on how it's set up, um, you'll be able to get their language and then the default language code. So let's just say the person is Spanish, Italian, and French, or sorry, Spanish, Italian, and German. Uh, well, none of those languages are actually gonna be uh, a match. So we'll default back to English. Uh, what are some of the other ones? We have uh, decimal separators, uh, if they use commas or spaces, uh, sorry, if they use periods or commas, grouping separators, if they use commas or spaces, 
uh, preferred currency. Uh, so on your phone, if you have that you prefer paying in uh, euros instead of USD, you'll be able to get this information from them, what country they're in, what calendar they use, uh, whether it's Georgian or Japanese, the Buddhist calendar, uh, what temperature they use, Celsius or Fahrenheit, or Fahrenheit, and what time zone they're in. When it comes to web browser, so if you're going to use a PWA or you're going to use this on the website, this is more of a, a best guess um, because the browsers don't store this information. If this is going to be on a native app, then you'll be able to get this information with confidence. So for this purpose, we're actually just going to change or we're just going to use the best language because we want the language to be able to translate these. All right, so with that set up, actually, let's expand this. We don't wanna actually show it to anybody, but it'll be nice to see for, for this application. We'll hide it back later. So now, if you remember the last video, we're gonna make this into a list. The list is gonna be translations. The key is going to be, in this case, to do list. And the language code that we're going to filter on is going to be equal to the best language that we have, which we've saved into the device language code. Shrink this back down to size. Now, for the purpose of this video, I actually set up my web browser to be in French. So if we did this right, I guess I have to log out. Let's close. You saw it actually kind of already worked. Okay. Oh, sorry. I, I missed a step. Uh, to do list. Okay. Um, yeah, when we make it a list, we actually have to go and use the magic text. So now, there we go. So we see that my browser is set up in French. So we see list FL. We'll go ahead and we'll do the same thing for the other components. So this is a list of translations. This is a uh, key equal to the device's language. Nope. Yeah, and the key is equal to sign up. The components going to have a magic text of the translated text and link to sign up. So now let's actually have a, a quick look. Okay, list of inscrivez-vous. Good. Let's go back to hiding this. We'll do this one more time and then I'll pause the video. I'll, I'll finish the rest of them and we'll have a look at what the results are. So I already have an account. We converted it to list. It's a list of translations. The key is already have an account. Now this is actually case sensitive. So we have to make sure that the, the letters and, and uh, spacing is correct. So I'm actually just going to go, yeah, okay, so it's lowercase. So let's just copy this. Paste, add another filter, language, language code equal to other component devices, language code. Let's see if we finished off the welcome screen. There we go. So we finished off the welcome screen. Sorry about that. I was uh, having a little internet issue. Uh, I think I figured it out now. So um, there we go. So I'm gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go through how to do the the sign up page now. Um, so what we're the, the way we're gonna do this is actually we're gonna move this out of the way because we're not gonna use the form. We are going to translate it using the lists. 
just like we did it before. Yeah, it's a bit more more involved, a bit more work. Um, at the end of the day, it's going to make a nicer user experience. Key is equal to email. The language code is equal to the welcome screens, device language. Go into the components. Magic text, translated text. Make this white. And make this to normal. Okay. So we're just finishing up the last the last of the translations. Key sign up filter language code welcome device language component sign up magic text translated text so if we've done that right we can now see that um, because my my web browser is set to French, uh, this is now a page in French. I'm not going to bother doing the login screen. It's the last screen. I'll, I'll leave that to you guys. You can challenge yourself to see if you can do it. Um, so, so let's just recap what we've actually done. Um, so we've created languages, translations, We've used our magic little tool here that will translate the entire site for the logged in users. When you update it, you'll have to log out and log back in as of the time of this recording. It doesn't mean that we're not gonna to make that better. We have also installed the localization component so that we can detect the language of the user. And by detecting the language of the user, we have taken all the translations and we filtered them uh, using the list from the original multi-language video. Doing it this way, you do see some loading windows. Again, we'll be improving this over time so that this component here will translate even if you're not logged in. That'll be a, a future release. At least for now, you'll be able to have a multi-language um, a multi-language application. So, so I hope that makes uh, your products better and uh, allows you to go more international. Thanks for watching.